Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and I'm back with number 85B, the answer portion of my What Is It Mystery Tool, and I guess Mystery Item Series, so let's get right into it. Okay, item one is a brown and sharp universal attachment, and it's for use on dial indicators for testing internal and other surfaces that cannot be reached conveniently with a regular straight spindle of a dial indicator. And they came in two different sizes, and this does not fit any of my indicators. But it's clearly marked brown and sharp right there on the shank or the thimble. Thank you for writing in the comments, because I would never have known what item 2 is, for instance. And it's called a switch obstruction gauge. It's used by railroad workers or inspectors or switchmen, I'm not sure which. But it, remember, it came in a brand new leather case. That's a brand new one. And I'll show you some pictures at the end of uh, various ones. That's about a $100 gauge. But this one obviously was carried in someone's pocket for many years. But it has to do with, I think, the switches al aligning correctly so that there is no derailment. I'm not sure exactly how they use, are used, but take a look here at what it says. This one was made by... Safe Tran, I guess, and there's the number of the gauge. Same on both side, I guess, uh, sides, I guess. And these are all different thickness, and they are marked. 3 sixteenths, 3 eighths, quarter inch, and eighth inch. You can put it in the comments if you know exactly how to use this. Sorry, I do not. Actually, there will be quite a few still pictures at the end if you're interested. Okay, here's item three. Thank you to everybody that sent these in, but I had this taped over, remember, in the first episode. So it's a Micronta micro stage, and the purpose of this is to hold slides, specimen slides, in a microscope. I suppose they're held between those two little screws, and then you can uh, move it around with these adjustment screws. There's no numbers on here, uh, graduations, as some of them may have. Haven't used a microscope very often, but I do know that sometimes the little specimen is not where you want it. You can't even find it, so this allows you to move that little glass slide around to where it's actually underneath the lens. Number four is made by V. Mueller, is marked here on the shank, and this is a surgical instrument meant to cut bone. I'm not sure exactly how, if it's in the, in the hips or what you do with it, but very recently I saw one of these. I don't know where, but it was, uh, actually I think it was in Dubuque, Iowa, and it was mounted, an older one, on a small brace. So I don't think this is a power instrument, but if there are any doctors watching this, tell exactly how it's used. Orthopedic men, I guess, would, would use that. And it looks a lot like a wood burr or even a metal burr, a coarse one. And a lot of people thought it was for woodworking. I suppose you could use it, but that thing probably cost $400. Lots and lots of people knew what this was. It's an Ohio Buckeye leaf, what's left of it. And these are the Buckeyes themselves. And somebody said, little kids don't like to climb those trees or walk underneath them in bare feet because these sure are sharp. You know, when I was a kid... There were a lot of buckeye trees, I guess they call them chestnut trees around town, and they were very messy when they started dropping the buckeyes, and they came out of the husks. And I remember that on the way home from school, Bucky Bradley threw one. They were having a fight with these buckeyes, if you know what they are. They're kind of pretty, shiny, brown things. And he hit John Foster in the eye, and he went crying, running home. He didn't show up for school for about a week, and then he came in with a patch over his eye. He lost that eye. Then about a month later, he had a glass eye, and he was showing it all to us. So don't throw objects. Here's the extra credit, and virtually everyone knew that. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that the average age of my viewers is 75 and up, if they knew, they know who... William Bendix is, and he was uh, well noted for his role in the life of Riley, Chester Riley. He worked in an aircraft plant, and remember I had all this masked off, but 
Maybe I left one of them on, I'm not sure. He also played in other TV roles, lots of them over the years, and made many movies, probably about 50 movies. One of his most famous movies was Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. I really loved that movie. He was in a couple war movies like Guadalcanal Diary, and then I think his first movie was They Drive by Night, and that was for truck drivers. And then the Babe Ruth story is what I remember him best for, and when I was researching this, someone said that he was from Brooklyn or someplace like that, but anyway, he was the bat boy for the New York Yankees in the 20s or 30s, whatever, and Babe himself took a liking to him and would send him on errands, probably to buy cigars and lotto tickets and things like that, so I'll put some pictures at the end of William Bendix. He was, although he had some starring roles, he was a bit of a character actor, and he also was noted for his voice. All right, hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you in the next one, and remember I have lots of other shop videos as well, 1500. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Who is this character with William Bendix?